Hello everybody, I'm Nora Burrows. Welcome to episode five of this crumb quilting series. If you haven't checked out episodes one through four, go ahead and do that, or you can just jump in right here. This is a good episode to jump in on because of the fact we haven't crumb quilted in a while. We're gonna go back to some of the basics and then also add on some new techniques. So some people have asked about what the plan for these crumb blocks is gonna be. And we're basically just gonna put them together. When we have enough crumb blocks to make a quilt, we're gonna put them together into a quilt. That may take a while, so this may be a fairly lengthy series of episodes, but that's okay because I'm having a ton of fun. So in this episode, I want to make one quilt block. I don't know how big it's going to be uh, or what it's going to look like, but it's going to be great. So let's go ahead and make one quilt block today. Let's just kind of look through here and pull some pieces. So I think this one, maybe with this bit of navy, Here's a piece that I threw into the crumb bin that already has three pieces together. So this is already partially done. Let's find one to go with that. How about this green piece here? Now notice I'm not caring about the size of the pieces. I'm not trying to look for a piece that's exactly the same size. I'm just putting pieces together that I think kind of go nicely. I like this green. Let's find one for the green. How about this black sparkly one. We'll put those two together. Uh, oh, here's one of the same kind. I could put it on the other side like that. Let's try that. And here's a bright kitcheny looking one about this orange piece. Again, these are a little bit bigger than crumbs. So if you're really wanting to go the traditional crumb way, you're going to be wanting to take your little bitty pieces like this and like this, this is, these are pretty much crumbs, but even smaller than this, even half the size, right? And be putting those two together. But I'm just working a little bit bigger. It's just a little bit easier. Ooh, this is a sparkly blue one. And I think that would go nice with this brown. So what I would do is just trim these up and then I would do the same to the other side. And then these pieces would go together. Let's find two more. I really like this fabric. Let's put it with, how about this brown batik? This is kind of a strange shape. Let's see if we can somehow put, put these ones together. So here's another one that I already have kind of put together. Let's put something with this. Now, I like to save my strips, my long pieces for times like this, where I can just take, let's see, here's a strip. Let's put this on the end. And then we're gonna do something a little tricky and put something down here as well. How about this one? This is gonna be fun. Let me show you how to do this. I've ironed all my pieces and now I'm going to trim them up. Now this one looks pretty good, doesn't need to be trimmed. Same with this side. This is a nice straight side and this is also a nice straight side. So I'm gonna put those right sides together. And I have my little clips here. These are binding clips that I'm sure you're familiar with. And I, Put the binder clip on the side that I'm going to sew and then I make a little pile of these next to my sewing machine and that way I don't get the pieces mixed up. I know which piece goes with which piece and I know which side I'm going to sew along. Let's do another one. So this one needs to be trimmed and I'm going to put, this was the one that was already sewn together. Now these are nice and straight. This one I need to trim both pieces. These pieces are now garbage. Clip it. This one's gonna be kind of fun. So I think what I'm gonna do is put it with this side. And these are both pretty straight, so I don't need to trim that. But what I am gonna do, so that I don't have this big floppy part back here, is trim just over here. And then put this piece back into my crumb bin. Once we have all these put together, we're gonna chain piece them which will make the process go really fast. We have about eight sets here. Normally, I would do many more sets. I would have lots and lots and lots of sets, far more than eight. You'd have a whole pile next to your sewing machine and you do them all at once. But for the purpose of this video, let's just take this little piece off here. For the purpose of this video, we're just gonna do a few. I'm going to leave this selvage on. I think it's kind of cool if some of the text ends up being in the, in the crumb quilt. That's totally fine with me. Both of these sides are pretty straight. 
same with this one both the sides are pretty straight and this is the last one here which i'm excited to do this one this one will be a lot of fun so let's put it on to the side like this and then we're going to put this onto the end here i wonder if we could fit one more on i bet we could let's find one more to put on the bottom let's see yeah that'll work All right, that's it. Let's take our stack over to the sewing machine and put these pieces together. I have my little stack of pieces here and you can see since they're all clipped, it doesn't matter. They won't get all mixed up or anything like that. So I'm gonna chain piece these together. When I get to the end, I don't take this off the machine. I put my needle down and I just take my next piece, lift up the presser foot. You probably all know, know this and this is so ridiculously basic, but I just feel like I have to say it. So then I keep going. Here's my last set. It's kind of this funky one that had this long strip with the three pieces attached. So I'm gonna take the first clip off, stick it under the machine and sew over this top piece right here. Then I get to my next one, make sure that it's nice and straight. and keep sewing. So as you can see, I'm adding these pieces onto this long strip. I do the same thing with the last piece here. So obviously this is why they call it chain piecing because you've just sewn all these pieces together. So what you're gonna do is just trim them up. Just take them off of the chain. Here's the last one that we did that had these three pieces attached to it. And so what you're gonna do is just cut this long strip and then when you open it up, you have your double. And same with these next two. So you've taken a long strip, a long piece, and you've made it into three crumbs. I have ironed all of these open. Now what I'm gonna do is take a look at, let's take a look and see what we have here. These are looking pretty good. And what we wanna do is one of two things. We can either add another piece on. So for example, we could go find another scrap and either add it on here or add it on here. So you could either add on a piece or you could start putting pieces that you've just put together, together. So uh, you could do something like this. You could put these two together. So you would trim this edge, trim this edge, and put these two pieces together. Let's do that. Let's see, what else do we have? Hmm, how about this? You could put these ones together. Let's do that. You could maybe do these ones together, maybe like this. We'll do that. For these remaining five, let's add crumbs from the crumb bin to these five. Let's go see what we have. We have, I have these two pieces that are already sewn together and I could put it like that. Let's do that. How about this with this and then it has this tail. So maybe I'll add this purple one onto the, onto the end. Let's put this down so you can see what I mean. So I'll sew this onto here and then this one, which needs a good ironing, I'll sew right onto there. And then after I chain piece all my pieces together again, just like we did last time, I'll cut it right down the middle there and then I'll have a double and a triple. This is a Star Wars fabric. That could be kind of interesting there. Let's do that. And again, you could add a little piece onto the end. And I think I'll do that. I have one last one to pair up here. This eagle fabric is a little bigger than a crumb. We're gonna use it right there. We need one for this one. How about, you know, let's also put like an official crumb. This is a real crumb. This is like a crumb crumb. And we haven't used a ton of real crumb crumbs. So let's put these two pieces together. Those are, those are real crummy crumb pieces. Then this one has already been kind of crumbed up from a project. Let's snip this tip off and we can put 
these ones together. I've sewn these all together. I still need to iron them open. And then these, I thought you would like to see how this is the one strip that I attached the two separate pieces on. And just like before, just cut it in half and then you have your crumb set. Let's do this one. This one's a little tricky because I overlapped them a little bit, but it's okay. And then again, you open it up and you have your piece attached and then another piece attached here. I'm gonna iron all these and then we'll see which ones we can combine. How about this? You could do this. And then your next cut would be down here and that would be totally fine. That almost starts to look like a fan. Let's do that. Let's put these ones together. As I mentioned, typically I would be having a lot more sets going all at the same time. So instead of nine sets or 10 or what we have here, I would have between you know 20 or 30 sets all going at the same time, which would give a lot more options in terms of pairing things up. So I do have these pieces that I'm gonna bring in that I paired a long time ago, but that I think we'll use today just to give ourselves a couple more options. There's two more, here's one. And then here's another. So let's see, now that we're bringing these ones in, I think, I think that will give us a little bit more flexibility. So for example, maybe these two, these two could go together. Let's, let's start with that. So we'll put these two together. How about this one? Let's, uh, Here's a piece that I did before that has a lot of seams all coming. So I need a piece that's gonna go right here and build up. How about that? This will be interesting because once you cut this down and you take into account seam allowance, you I'm not sure if there will be any of this left, but let's try it. Let's see what happens. How about we put this with this and then we think about our next cut. It could be here, or it could be down here. We'll put these ones together. And I wonder, could we put these ones together? I think we could. Again, you wanna think about your next cut. It could go here. That's probably where it would go. It would go right there. So let's put these two pieces together. This is really crumb in it. This is crumb quilting right here, teeny tiny. How about this piece? What if we put these ones together? I think that could work. You have to keep track of this one. I think I wanna enclose this piece first. So what if I did this? These greens would blend, but that doesn't bother me. And then my next piece I could put up here and then this would be enclosed. See, if you keep it out here and you start trimming, if you keep this tiny piece out here and you start trimming too much, you're gonna lose that piece before it's sewn, sewn into the body of your, of your quilt block. We have a couple left. Let's see, four, we'll put two and two. So how about, this could be kind of fun to have this kind of as an L shape here. Maybe we'll do that. And then this one we can just put right here and we could probably even find a little piece to put on the end. Let's start with this one. Trim a straight edge here as well as here. These will go together like that. Here's our tricky one. I want to leave as much of this as possible. So I'm going to go a little bit on the diagonal here. This one is already straight but let's add a piece to the, to the top up here. This is a crumb, let's add that. And this one together. This is gonna be a tricky one because it's pretty teeny tiny, but I think it'll be okay. We're just gonna, you know what, let's do, let's put these on top of each other and trim, the, trim them at once. We'll do our trimming. And then you can just put your clip right on. And if you wanted, if you wanted it to be really cool, you could do something like on a diagonal. Let's do that. Let's, let's cut this in half and we can, we can add another piece onto each side. Cut this, 
which now doesn't really, what was I gonna do with this initially? I think I was gonna do that, which I guess I could still do. I think I'm gonna take this little teeny tiny piece off the top here because that's just too small. But let's see, could I still match these ones? Let's turn this around and do that. So I'm just gonna connect these two together, just like this. Now I have this piece. I have this big strip that has all these crumbs sewn together. It was from another project. I could kind of put it on here and then just trim it at the bottom. Let's do that. And then we can sew it right on. And then we have this one with, where'd that other piece go? All right, I lost the piece to go to pair with this. Remember it was the L, it was gonna be the same fabric there. I don't know what happened to it. Maybe it's on the ground or something. But let's, um, let's take more of this long piece and we can trim it. Let's see, what makes the most sense? Yeah, we can do that. And we'll just trim it right here. This one's pretty straight. Let's trim this. Oh, here it is. It was right underneath it. Oh my gosh. Okay, for the love of God, let's just trim this and we'll put these together. That's hilarious. But now I have this one. Let's put it with this, with this weird cat piece. The aim here eventually is that you create quilt blocks out of these scraps and then you square up the quilt blocks and because they're squared up, you can attach the quilt blocks together. That's the goal we're going for here. Trim this first. And this one. And put them together. That's gonna be a really pretty one, I think. All my pieces sewn together and ironed open. And I will say that it's exciting because now our blocks are getting a little bit bigger. And as they get bigger, I try to have as few seams on the outer part as possible. This is still small enough that I can continue to add, you know, pieces with a lot of seams. But as they get bigger and your block starts to become a size that you want to square it off at, you want to have as little seams as possible so that when you're attaching your blocks, it's, you're not dealing with a ton of bulk. I love the moda there, that's kind of cool. This one's fun, so the next piece I add will be here. I'm gonna chop it right here, and we'll add, we'll add a piece. There's that one. This might be one of my favorites so far. This is the one where we're using the little crumbs. Oh, here's one that has the two pieces. We have to cut this. Here's another one that we have to cut. I added this piece at the machine. I don't think you saw me put this one together when we were pairing stuff. And I'm gonna cut this little, that's too small. Get that out of here. That, this one, remember this was the Star Wars fabric, so now it's just a teeny tiny strip in there. And this one. So what I think we should start doing is, for time's sake, because my guess is that this video is getting pretty long, is just trying to make a quilt block out of, out of a couple of these pieces. So we likely won't be using all of these pieces today. Um, and in theory, you'd be making you know multiple quilt blocks all at the same time. But let's just see what we have and start aiming towards, towards making a block. You could turn it around. That could work, because you could go right down here, and then up here. Let's try this. Let's put these two pieces together. This one I think we can also work with, maybe with something like this. So if you just put these three strips together, I wouldn't do this because remember, you're trying to enclose the smaller pieces. So you want as much of these long, pieces that don't have seams in them on the outside. So I would do something where you know you flip it around and that way your long pieces are on the outside and all of your small little pieces are on the inside. So what would happen if, let me cut these two straight. So that's cutting off quite a bit, but that really has to be the next cut right there. And that's all right. Now let's see how these come together. That looks pretty nice. Let's put these ones together. So 
So the cut would be made right here, right here. Let's try that. These are ones that we've created, but that we haven't used yet. But we're going to put these aside and try and, and work on the other pieces just for the benefit of time, just to get at least one block made. Here are the three pieces that I'm working with right now. Let me trim this little piece off here so we can visualize it a little bit better. So these are the pieces. And like I mentioned, when you're working with more pieces, you have more options. So this one is very different from these two. I'm just gonna put that aside for a second. What I think I'd like to do is somehow connect these two pieces like this. But I need this piece to come down farther because if I make my cut here, I'm going to lose this little bit of fabric. It's gonna to come too close, I'm gonna lose it, and I really like that piece. So I want this to come out a little more, and then I can connect these two together, and then we'll see where we're at. So let me, let me see what I have for a piece that might go here. Maybe even something that we used earlier. Um, let's see. I could attach these two together, so I would just need to make my cut here and then I would attach it here, and then I would put this full piece with this full piece. Let's try attaching these two together, if, see if it works. Let's make this cut first. And then let's lay it on top so we can see what we really wanna do here. I think like that, and then our next cut would come down here, which would attach to the other big piece. So let's make this cut. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew these two pieces together. Here's the piece that we, we just sewed these two pieces together. Now, I don't love that these two fabrics are right next to each other, but sometimes that happens and it's really not that big of a deal. So if I were to make a cut right here, and so if I cut this piece right here and then I cut this one like right there, then I would be sewing these together like that. Okay, so let's make this cut first. And then we'll do the same on the other side. And look at this teeny tiny bee here. It's like the teeny tiniest piece. And then they'll go just like this. This is the line that we sewed these two together right here. So I think what I want to do now, I kind of want this to be the top and I'm gonna square this up here. I'm gonna cut a straight line here and I'd like to attach something over here. How about that? That's kind of cool, let's do that. Here's the piece I just added. I'm gonna cut this into a straight line right here because I want this to be my top. And once I have a straight top, I can kind of see where else I need to add in order to square this off. Now, it would be nice if I had a triangle piece to go here, because that would square that off. This is pretty squared here, so this could come straight down. I'm gonna look for a triangle crumb and see what I can find. I think I see one over there, actually. I saw this all the way across the table. It's not quite a triangle, but I'll make it a triangle. I'm gonna put it right here. A lot of these pieces in here were much bigger when we started and they kind of become crumbs because as you're trimming them and sewing them and trimming them and sewing them, they get smaller and smaller. Here's my triangle. I'm going to sew the triangle on. Now, while we're here, let's look at the bottom because this is getting to be ready to be done here. So let's see if we can add a piece here and here. Maybe not right this second, but let's trim this so that we see what we need to add. I'm fearful that I might need a pretty big piece right here. Um, I do have this that I could just sew on. It's a little cheating because um, this is a pretty big piece here, but I think it's okay. And look, this just happens to be the same fabric as that, which is kind of nice. So I'm gonna do that. Sewn on, let's trim this piece first. And what I'm seeing is 
uh, that this is not great because I should have had a bigger piece here because look, I had already trimmed this. It goes right against this line here. And if I keep going all the way up, it's probably going to be okay. Basically, it should continue on this line and it doesn't. It's not quite big enough, but it doesn't really matter because it, it continues on the line until about here and then I can just trim down earlier than I thought. But, you know, these things happen and it's, it's okay. But let's trim this. And then I'm going to rotate it so that the top is on this bottom line here and let's see how far over let's try and put it right here and we'll trim this okay so now we have our two corners here corner corner so let's come down this way All right, it's looking good. So now let's turn it, square it down this way. And now we really only need one more piece down here. Let's see what we have. Now, it will need to be on the diagonal because even though this is kind of a rectangle shape here, you obviously can't fit this rectangle shape in very easily. So we're gonna wanna go on the diagonal. Let's cut that. So we want something for this space right here. I don't think this is gonna be big enough. But you know what? Let's use, because we don't want a huge piece right here because everything is so tiny. We don't want a big piece. Let's take this piece and add something onto the end of it, like maybe this. So this came off when we were squaring this up. Let's take this and sew it on to the, let's sew these pieces together and then we'll attach this big piece over here. These pieces sewn together. I'm now going to sew this piece to here. Let's trim this. Okay, now here's the bummer. This is what you don't wanna have happen. Look at that tiny, this was part of the chicken piece that was on here. That is like the tiniest bit and it's right on an edge. I mean, if you look at the 1 fourth inch line, you're losing that whole piece. There's not gonna be anything left. So that's not ideal. And what I could do is cut, kind of cut this piece here. You know, let's do that. Let's just do that. I know it's ridiculous and I should just leave it, but you know, it will look better if we fix it. And now we need a big enough piece. I think that will be big enough. Now we can trim this. This will be much better. I like that this blue part isn't so wide like it, like it was. Because we're going for small. It's the whole point of the crumb quilting. You just have to think small. There it is. Oh my gosh, we did it. That was successful. I love this crumb block, the strip down the side. I think that turned out really cool. The pop of green, you know, the pop of kind of this lemony yellow. I love those little tiny pieces, as well as, of course, the Star Wars strip down here. And then where's the moda? Um, oh, here it is, right in the middle. There's that moda, which is really cool. So thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.